everyone, my name is Emily. I'm a chef and registered dietitian, and I'm the director of the St. Barnabas Hospital Center for Culinary Medicine and Teaching Kitchen. Like many of you, I've been staying home a lot lately, um, and since we can't have cooking classes in the teaching kitchen, I thought I would bring them all to you. I wanted to show you all um, just some simple recipes that you can make, hopefully with ingredients that you already have at home, so you don't have to go out to the grocery store too often. I haven't been grocery shopping in about two weeks, so I'm going to be showing you something that thankfully I can make here with ingredients that I have on hand. If this is something you want to make at home and you don't have exactly the same ingredient, don't worry about it. We can always do substitutions, but that's the beauty of cooking. This is going to be the first of hopefully a series of many videos, so I hope you follow along with me in my journey of cooking with whatever I have on hand. Um, so today we are going to make some New Orleans style red beans and rice. I actually just moved to New York from New Orleans, so I want a really familiar, comforting dish. Um, thankfully, I have those ingredients on hand, and you might find that you have a lot of these ingredients as well. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to use are some red beans. These are just red kidney beans. I soaked these in water overnight. You don't have to soak beans. Um, I like to soak them because soaking them removes that compound that might make you a little gassy, so if you're not a fan of that, soak those beans and get rid of the water that you soak them in. Like I said, you don't have to soak them. Um, it's just another step. If you uh, want to make something right now, don't feel like you have to soak them for a long time. These do double in size when they soak, so make sure you have a container big enough to fit all of them. Um, and when you end up cooking them, we're going to use a lot less water than we might normally use if we're just starting from dried beans. So I'm going to take my soaked beans and I'm going to just cook everything in a crock pot today. I love using the crock pot because once everything is in there, it's hands off. I'm not making a lot of dishes and in a couple hours I'll have a really delicious pot of beans. So I'm going to throw these in my crock pot. And I'm going to turn this on high. We could cook these on low. They're going to take about 8 to 10 hours on low and about 4 hours on high. These aren't going to burn just in here dry as they are. The crock pot takes a long time to uh, heat up, so they're going to be fine like that for now. And we're going to move on to everything else we're going to add to our beans. So in New Orleans, uh, we have what they call the Holy Trinity. It's onions, celery, and bell peppers. So we're going to use those to be the vegetables in our beans and season them as well. So I'm going to start by cutting up my onions. I have three small onions here today. I might normally use two, but like I said, I bought these a couple weeks ago. They're probably going to go bad soon, so I just want to use up as many as possible. And I like having a lot of veggies in my beans as well. So with my onions, I like to cut the tops off and we're looking at our onion the roots the bottom, then we have our top. I like to leave that root intact and just cut that top off. And anytime I'm cooking, I like to have a bowl that I can put all of my scraps into. So I've cut those tops off. Now I'm gonna cut all of my onions in half. When we can do repetitive um, tasks like this, it actually makes prepping things a lot faster. So now I'm going to peel all of my onions. Again, I'm going to peel them all at the same time. This just makes things go by a little bit faster when I can do the same thing over and over again. And this is also the reason why I like to cut the top off of the onion. I find that it just makes it a little bit easier to um, peel that onion. If you want to, something I really like to do is save some of my vegetable scraps um, and use that to make vegetable stock. So I might save these tops of the onion um, and use them later to make a chicken stock or vegetable stock with. Alright, so now that my onions are all uh, peeled, I'm going to dice them pretty small so that, and then throw them straight into my pot with the beans. Um, your knife cuts don't need to be perfect here. The beauty of the slow cooker is everything just cooks down. Um, and so no one's going to tell if your onion's not cooked perfectly. So I am just going to start by making some slices into my onion. And I'll show you why I like to leave the root of the onion on. I do that because I made a bunch of cuts into my onion and it's not falling apart. That root of the onion holds everything together. It just makes 
slicing and dicing that much easier. I'm not going to have onion all over my cutting board. So I'm just going to cut this up, again, pretty small. I like to use as much of that onion as possible. Again, if I'm making a chicken stock or a vegetable stock later, I could use the rest of this onion with the root on to go ahead and do that. Um, one thing I like to do as well, um, if I know I want to make beans, if I'm soaking my beans tonight and I know I want to make them tomorrow, sometimes if I have time, I'll actually cut all of my vegetables the night before as well and just put them into um, some kind of reusable container in the fridge and have them ready to go. And if I'm going to work, sometimes I'll wake up a little early, turn the crock pot on, throw everything in there, and so when I get home from work, my beans are ready to go. Right, so we got our onions in there. Um, I'd say that's about a cup, a cup and a half of onions. So maybe one really big onion or two medium sized onions would work well. Next we have our bell peppers. I have this giant bell pepper that I'm really excited to cut into. Then I have a green bell pepper as well. So uh, with the Holy Trinity, um, usually we're using green bell peppers, but it's totally okay to use red or any other color bell pepper that you have. Um, and then when I'm cutting bell peppers, I don't want the seeds to go in with my beans. They're a little bit bitter. So the way that I like to cut a pepper is to think of it as having four walls, and we're going to cut those walls down. So I'm going to cut down one wall, the second, turn, cut that third wall down, then I lay my pepper down to cut off that fourth wall and the floor. That way all of my seeds are nice and contained and I can put that in my scrap bowl. Like my onion, I'm just going to dice this bell pepper. So I'm first going to cut it into some strips, line those strips up, and then I'm going to go ahead and dice them. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. I cut this a little big. You could cut this smaller or bigger. It just depends on your preferences. One thing to remember with beans is they are going to cook down a lot. So even though some of these pieces might seem big right now, once they're cooked down, they're going to seem a lot smaller. And this is when something like my bench scraper comes in handy. When I have so much product to pick up, it becomes a lot easier with this bench scraper. And um, next we're going to do the third part of our Holy Trinity, some celery. Um, my celery is very sad right now, some sad celery. Um, so I'm going to try to use up a lot of it because I don't want it to go bad in my fridge. So even if your celery looks like this, it's limp, it's like a noodle, that's okay. Um, just like the peppers, it's going to cook down a lot, it's going to be really soft in the end. So it doesn't matter if it isn't the prettiest celery right now. So I'm just going to trim off the ends. This is something I could use to make um, some stock with in the future if I want to. And then for my celery, because it's really long, I like to cut it into um, smaller pieces first. Just because something like this is going to be a lot more manageable than something like this. So I just cut those all in half. And then when I want to dice my celery, I just cut that long stalk in half uh, lengthwise to make it a little bit smaller. And this will be really easy. I'm just going to line up as much as I'm comfortable working with and just go ahead and dice that up. And this may seem like a lot of vegetables to you. I'm using a lot more um, than one might normally use to make something like red beans. Um, one trick that I like to tell people for vegetables is if you're not a big fan of vegetables right now, um, cut them smaller. The smaller you cut your vegetables, the less likely you are to notice them in your food, especially something like beans where we're cooking them down so much. If we cut those up really small, they're just going to melt into the sauce that we make. Alright, so I happen to have a sad jalapeno in my fridge, so I'm going to throw that in there as well. I like really spicy red beans, so this isn't the most traditional, but I have it, I might as well use it. So I like to cut the top off the jalapeno and then cut it in half. If you want to use the seeds, you can. I'm going to take them out today, um, and I just like to do that with a spoon. So straight into my scrap bowl, I'm going to scrape out those seeds so I don't make a mess on my cutting board. I also like to do this because I try not to touch the inside 
of the jalapeno too much with my bare hands just because it can get really spicy. And I'm just gonna, just like my pepper, cut that into some long strips. Line those strips up and give them a dice. Now I am still touching the inside of the jalapeno a little bit, cutting it this way, so I am gonna make sure to wash my hands really, really well after I am done getting everything ready. Um, I usually like to use dish soap when I wash my hands. I find it gets rid of the spiciness a little bit better than random hand, uh, your general hand soap. All right, so final vegetable. I'm gonna put a couple cloves of garlic in there as well. If you don't have garlic, you can use garlic powder as well. So I just like to smash that garlic first. And I smash it really, really well. Um, that way that peel of the garlic comes off really easily. And it's going to make it a little bit easier to mince uh, once we're done. So I've gotten the peel of the garlic off. If the heel of your garlic is really tough, we can slice that off as well. Really just that one's bad. So for my garlic, I'm just going to mince it. Mincing doesn't need to be perfect. We just want it to be kind of small. So we just give that a good chop, clean off our knife, and then I'm going to use my bench scraper to pick that all up and put that in my pot. So my pot is very full right now. I'd say it's more vegetable than bean, um, and that's okay. Those veggies are going to cook down. It's just going to be really nutritious and full of veggies at the end. And the last thing uh, we're going to add is going to be some smoked andouille sausage. So I have that right here. Um, if you can't find this in New York, that's okay. Any kind of smoked sausage would work. Some people like to put a ham hock in with their beans, or you can leave it vegetarian, um, and they're still gonna be really delicious. So this is about 12 ounces of sausage. I'm just gonna slice this thin. Um, just because I like to have some like bigger pieces of sausage in the end, so they're more identifiable. So we're just gonna slice this pretty thin. Um, if we decide not to use some smoked sausage, maybe we want to make our beans vegetarian, we just don't have it on hand, um, you can add uh, some smoked paprika to your beans. That smoked paprika is going to give you that same smoky flavor that you would normally get from a smoked sausage without having to add any meat. Now, one thing I do like to remember is this sausage does have a fair bit of sodium in it, um, and I keep that in mind when I season my meat. I know that the sausage is going to be adding some sodium to my beans, so I'm going to add less salt than I normally would. Um, like if I wasn't using the sausage, I'm going to have to add a little bit less salt than that. And that's where tasting comes into it too. I'm not gonna add any salt at the beginning because adding salt to our beans at the beginning of cooking um, will make it so they never really get soft. And I want my beans to be soft and creamy, so I'm gonna taste these uh, beans as they cook and add salt as it seems appropriate. All right, so um, I'm going to, this is very full, it is gonna cook down a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and add some water to my beans, just so I can start to stir everything together. So, totally optional, but I have already heated up about four cups of water in an electric kettle. Just because my crock pot is very old and takes a long time to heat up, this just gets things going a little bit faster. So, I'm gonna add that to my beans. I'm gonna add my seasonings, and then we should be good to go. So because I have so many vegetables, I'm going to add just another cup of water to this. And as this cooks down, um, those vegetables release a lot of water as well. So this isn't full of water, that's okay. Those veggies are going to release a lot of their own water. And then the last thing we're going to do is add some seasonings. So what a lot of people like to add is a Creole seasoning. Tony's is really popular. Um, this has a lot of salt in it, so I try not to use too much of it. And because I don't want to add too much salt to my beans right away, 
I'm gonna hold off on adding this. I might add a little bit at the end, depending on the flavor. But I do know that in my Tony's, some of the main ingredients are gonna be garlic powder, chili powder, um, some cayenne pepper, and some black pepper as well. So I'm just gonna add those to my beans instead. We want about two teaspoons total of seasoning, so I'm just gonna add about half a teaspoon of each of these seasonings. So about half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then half a teaspoon of chili powder. And we can always add more seasoning at the end. If we want it spicier, if we want more garlic flavor, we can make this taste however we want. I like really spicy beans, so I'm gonna add a full half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Um, if you don't like things as spicy, you don't have to add as much spice. And then I'm just gonna do a couple really good twists of uh, cracked black pepper. I don't normally measure this when I'm um, cracking like this. I just add whatever looks like a good amount. And then if we want to add a little extra smoky flavor, we can add a little bit of smoked paprika. I'm gonna hold off on this for now. We'll taste it later um, and see how it is. Maybe we add a little bit in a couple hours. So all I'm gonna do is stir this all together, um, put a top on, and then we'll come back in about three hours and see how our beans are. All right, so it's been about three hours and we're gonna check in on our beans. I will say I have stirred this a couple times while it's been cooking. Um, you can see that a lot more liquid has um, kind of filled our crock pot. I haven't actually added any. That's all just come straight from the vegetables. So like I said, when those vegetables cook down, they're going to release a lot of water. Um, so I'm just going to give this a stir. Everything's mixing together really well. Um, we've got some really great color on that liquid coming out as well, which means that we've probably seasoned these um, pretty well. So what I want to do is just go ahead and um, see how far along the beans are, see if they're getting soft yet, and then I'm going to taste the liquid that they're cooking in as well. So I'm going to grab a bean. I just like to grab one with my fingers. Okay, so the bean's getting pretty soft, but it's not like soft and creamy yet. So this is probably going to need about another hour or two. Um, and I do want this liquid to thicken up a little bit. So what I'm going to do, probably in about half an hour, is actually take the back of my spoon, and I'm just going to mash some of the beans against the side of the bowl. The starchiness from the beans is going to help thicken up that liquid a lot. And I want to taste the liquid as well, see if it's tasting okay. Now we have to remember, there's no salt in this yet, so it's going to taste a little flat, but when I taste it, I can taste the cayenne pepper, I can taste the uh, chili powder that I've added. I think I want to go ahead and add a little more smoked paprika, just to get that smoky flavor out a little bit more. I don't always measure things, that's probably about a quarter teaspoon. Um, I'm going to give that a stir, and then in about an hour we'll come back and we'll go ahead and add salt to this. After we add the salt, we'll let it cook down a little bit longer to help bring out those flavors, but I think we're off to a really good start. One last thing I'm going to do to help thicken this up a little bit is we want some of this water to evaporate out. Instead of putting the lid on all the way, I'm just going to put it kind of a jar so that there's an area here where some of that liquid can evaporate out so this can cook down a little bit and hopefully thicken up uh, in the next hour or so. All right, so it's been about two hours actually. I know I said we'd come back in an hour, but my meat, my beans needed a little more time. Um, so after about two hours, our beans are looking uh, a bit creamier. I've mashed about a quarter of the beans just against the side of the pot. That releases the, the starchy insides of the beans and helps them uh, to thicken up that liquid. So you can see it's really thickened up a bit. Those vegetables have cooked down a lot. I know it really looked like maybe too many vegetables, although I would say that there's no such thing as too many vegetables, but it looked like a lot in the pan at the beginning, but they've cooked down a lot. Um, and now we're looking really good. Um, so at this point, um, 
my beans are soft, my liquid is getting a lot thicker, I'm going to go ahead and start adding salt to my beans now. So you could add just regular salt if you want to. I keep mine just in a little container like this. Um, if you have something like Creole seasoning on hand, you could use this as well. It's about half salt, um, so if you taste your beans th and think that they need more seasoning, you can go ahead and use something like a Creole seasoning, or you can just add regular salt. So I'm going to give these a taste. And it's pretty spicy as it is. Um, so I might add maybe about half a teaspoon of this Creole seasoning and then another teaspoon or two of just regular salt. So I got my teaspoon measure here. I'm going to add that in just for a little extra heat, a little extra seasoning. And then this is one teaspoon. So I'm going to add about two teaspoons of salt to this. Now one thing to keep in mind with salt is the longer it's in your food, the longer it can cook in your food, the more that it's going to bring out those flavors. So if you want to, you can eat this right now. Um, I might leave this plugged in in the crock pot for another half hour or so to let those flavors come out. But I'm just going to give this a stir and then give that another taste. And I think that tastes perfect. So um, as this sits, even in the refrigerator, those flavors are just going to come out even more. So tomorrow these beans are going to taste even better today and they're already pretty delicious. So these are good to go. Like I said, you can leave them plugged in for a little bit longer if you want, especially if you like your beans a little bit creamier. Just leave them plugged in with the lid off until they're as thick as you want them to be. I like my beans to be, you know, thick, but a little saucy because I like to mix them in with uh, whatever I serve them in, usually with some rice or some brown rice to make a nice complete meal. But one thing I am going to do right now is I can't eat all these beans at one time and I'm in a two-person household. This is a whole pound of beans. That's just way too many for us to go through before they go bad. So I actually like to pre-portion out some beans in some reusable containers. And as soon as these cool down, I'm going to pop them right into the freezer. So I have this smaller container here. I like to save containers that I get from any takeout that I might get. These are great for portioning out leftovers. They can go in the microwave. They're great for taking some lunch to work. I'm going to make sure to leave some room at the top so this can expand as it freezes. And then I have a slightly larger container here as well. Using plastic containers works well um, for freezing. I would avoid using anything like glass that could break in the freezer as liquids expand. So things like plastic tend to work a little bit better. And so I have my one smaller container that I filled up first. This container is a little bit bigger, so I like to have different sizes that I portion out as well. So the smaller container might be a meal or two um, for household, whereas this larger container might feed us for a couple days. So depending on what my needs are in a day or in a week, I can decide which um, container I want to thaw. So I put the lid on, but I've left it cracked. I'm going to let these cool down at room temperature, maybe for about 20 minutes, um, just to let that steam es escape, and then put them in the fridge. Once they're completely cooled, I'll transfer them to my freezer and then I just have a lot of meals ready to go for a rainy day. And once again, my name is Emily. I'm a chef and registered dietitian. I'm the director of the St. Barnabas Hospital Center for Culinary Medicine and Teaching Kitchen. And I hope you can uh, join me again for future videos where I'm just cooking with what I have uh, while I'm staying at home.